So this panel is uh, put together exclusively of FinOps Foundation staff uh, because we wanted to have a neutral view and commentary, uh, not from customers or the platforms themselves, uh, about what we saw uh, in the data. Um, Ashley Romatko uh, joined us recently uh, after many years running the FinOps practice at Pearson. Um, Joe Daly uh, joined us as well after many years running uh, FinOps practice at Nationwide and Cardinal Health. Uh, Vasilio Marconastasakis has been a, a product manager and service person in this world for seven or eight years. Uh, and Steve Trask uh, put all this together and is going to be walking through this. He owned the state of FinOps data for us. Um, all these folks, uh, yeah, have been working in the space for many years. So we wanted to invite them to give some different uh, feedback and ideas about why the data came out it did, because there were some interesting things, some controversial things, and also some unsurprising things. So with that, uh, Steve, I will pass it over to you. Cool. Thanks, JR. Hey, everyone. Apologies, I've got a slight cold, so my, my accent isn't quite as normal uh, as before. But just to highlight where we are with the state of FinOps, obviously we had over a thousand respondents. We covered 40 billion in spend, that's an average, so we could be higher. And also, if you've got any questions, please join the state of FinOps channel. You know, we're happy to reach out to us. There's a lot of numbers here, there's a lot of data. So we do want to encourage kind of like what splits you would like to see from it. So moving on it, it does cover a wide range of industries we cover trying to cover everything as possible so there's lots of different views there's lots of different maturities within this um, and that's key and we do want to pretext this kind of these following slides just for the fact that what cloud service providers they they use um so we go to the next slide oh actually sorry there's a skip there i added this i added this late yesterday the next slide this is a list of all the tools Oh, sorry, we're jumping around. Sorry, cloud providers. So we wanted to pretext of what cloud providers people were using. We found that 89, over 89% of respondents using more one cloud. It does follow market trends, typically AWS being the largest heavy user. Um, and then we have Azure and GCP and on-prem as well, followed by the others as well. But you can see that the medium uses and light usage, again, extends in Azure and GCP. Um, so we do want to pretext these are the tools that people are using with these clouds just to set that context. Steve, I'll jump back to that, that previous one with the long range of tools there. Was, uh, I, I was surprised personally to see just how many uh, different yeah. tools were being used. Uh, this list keeps getting longer and longer. Um, I, I'm just thinking, how are we gonna do this next year? Thinking all these tools of how are we gonna ask people about all these tools and the different mechanisms. I know that it was a long list today, this, this year where people kind of like uh, applied what uses they did for each tool. So it's just like, if this list, list keeps growing as it does year on year, it's going to be a mammoth task, um, but it's it's super it's super exciting to see that space grow as quickly as it does. I, I think it also highlighted just uh, how FinOps as a thing is getting broader, right? And there's there's tools that are just FinOps, but then there's also the ones around them, right? That are doing SaaS and licensing, automation, yes. CI/CD that are starting to interject into the space. And I think there's some great questions. Just wanted just in the chat. So how do we categorize these tools? And I think that's one of the challenges we're facing, and what we really want to solve is like how do we group them in a logical way that people can use so they can kind of find those right tools because there's so many tools that do so many different things. Um, so yeah, definitely. Cool, so overall, we aggregated all the kind of the, um, the primary tools, the, the frequently used tools and the occasionally used tools. Um, anything with 1% or above respondents, um, we kind of, we listed out all out here. So I do wanna bring the panel in, um, I mean, Ashley, from your experience as well, does this seem right? Is there anything that's standing out to you? Yeah, I think, you know, we've talked about this before, you know, the native tools are really fundamental. If you're using a cloud vendor, you're most likely, you know, consistently using their platforms, you're in there daily. Um, so that resonates that those are fundamental tools. Um, I think as you look at organizations that are more complex, we just mentioned that, you know, using multiple cloud providers um, or the way that you've set up your account structure or your project structure, subscription structure, that using some of the SaaS tooling um, is able to give you kind of a, a better view sometimes across your account structure or across your vendors that you're using. So that makes sense. And I was, you know, happy to see the Kudos uh, dashboard here. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Um, they're, they've, you know, I think they're ones that have been really listening to the customer um, as they've been developing new features. They've got some great tutorials on how to set it up. So I liked uh, seeing that as well. Datadog's another great one. You know, you've already got engineers inside of those observability platforms. Makes sense that they can show some cost metrics along it as well. So I'd like to see the variety here. Cool. And, it, 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 and if we take it, deeper look at this because this is everything aggregated. If we move to the next slide, you can really see out kind of like the, which is the primary tools. This is stack ranked in order of primary, um, but also you can get the use, use frequently, use occasionally and try, but don't use. 
Um, I know, Joe, we've had plenty of conversation about this. But what's your perspective on this one as well? Yeah, I think this is great. What, what's really interesting to me is the, the blue and the purple, the use frequently and use occasionally, that we really need to, as practitioners, start thinking about all the different tools that are in our toolbox. We don't just use a hammer. There's a lot of other uh, tools that we would need to use for certain situations. I'm thinking back to my last practitioner days. If you had an anomaly alert in CloudTrail, there's no amount of tagging, no amount of billing data that's going to tell you what is generating that cloud trail anomaly. So you would use, I'm looking at Splunk there. We would have to go and do some detective work in Splunk collecting the logs. Was it a new security policy that we implemented or was an application not operating the way it was attended to? Was it was the business user using it in a different way? So you really need to start building up, thinking more holistically about all the tools that are at your service here. Um, and, and I'm, I'm kind of laughing at Cost Explorer, the cloud native tools. Uh, what some of the cloud uh, service providers are doing, like you, I, I think Cost Explorer is underreported, if anything, because you cannot acquire savings plans outside of going through Cost Explorer. So I, I challenge everyone to really start thinking about all the different tools that they're using and all for, for what reasons so that we can get some real maturity and uh, visibility into, into what's in our toolbox or tool bucket. Yeah, tool stack. Tool stack. <laughs> <laughs> Still did, trying to define that. I think that's really interesting. You know, what what are people using, and how wide are they using, and what combinations? I think that's that's really interesting. I think in the last couple of days, we're looking at this data is like, how can we find those things out? So, if, if we go to the next slide, we can kind of look at the occasional um, the tools um, listed out there. And we, I did this did this yesterday with Baz and, and looked at how many tools on average were people using, and it's three point seven tools. Um, Baz, what are your insights on this? Yeah, so um, just it's a nice dovetail off of what Joe just said, which is, you know, you're, you're going to have to use multiple tools depending on the use case. So the obvious thing here is there are use cases where folks uh, really need um, different tools in order to meet them. I, I think the other interesting thing about this for me is just based on my experience is a lot of organizations, you know, they've already deployed tools, you know, so they're, they've already socialized certain mm -hmm. tools, whether it's for dashboarding, whether it's for pushing reports to the edge. And so, you know, uh, if they've been using these tools for a while, it's it's a lot more efficient for them to feed data to these existing dashboards. So I, I saw in the chat, folks were talking about Power BI. Power BI is a super popular one, especially for enterprise organizations, and they have very powerful dashboarding capabilities. So, you know, a lot of times folks really just want to re-harness existing tooling and push cloud data to it. So, you know, there's, there's, um, there's that uh, scenario, which I think causes a little bit of fragmentation. And then the third thing for me is there's a big culture piece here as well. Um, you know, despite having purchased a primary tool, uh, folks get used to doing things a certain way. And depending on the size of your organization, uh, it's really challenging to get people to change. And even though your primary tool may do certain things better, folks are just comfortable or more efficient at using a pre-existing tool, maybe a tool like Cost Explorer, because that's where they started and had used it for a couple of years. So they've got scripts or queries already cached or copied and pasted, or, you know, they've got their mm -hmm. workflow set up. And so it's just easier for them to meet the demands of their day-to-day -day reporting by just kind of flexing that muscle memory. And so, so that cultural piece is really like, have you invested the time in order to drive education around your primary tool, or do you have folks in your organization that are still kind of leaning on that muscle memory from pre-existing tools? So those are kind of my three things on, on this slide. Well, I think too, to add to that, you see 3.7 tools there, um, you know, there's integration that's being done in the back end. So we used to have this conversation, do you build, do you buy? And it's like you build and buy, but more importantly, you integrate those into your business processes. And so I think that's become more powerful Yeah, and there was a great call out in the chat as well. It's like, do you see the trend of the, the kind of the homegrown tools? And, and a point on the last slide uh, was homegrown previously last year was about fourth, I think, and it's moved up to second. So we, we're seeing those homegrown. It's kind of like, what do we class as homegrown? Is it is it those integration between tools or is it something more standalone? Uh, I, I would, you know what, I would also call out here, what's really interesting over the last five years, which seems like, uh, you know, an entire lifetime ago, if you go back to cloud cost management five years ago, is people really understand the discipline much more now. So they're much more comfortable 
putting together multiple tools to answer their reporting needs, where I would think if you rewind a few years, people would lean on third party tooling a bit more while they're building that, you know, education piece, trying to understand sort of the nuances be behind commitment based discounts, behind commercial discounts, how to deal with amortization, how to deal with cost sharing. Um, and sort of the gaps that were inherent in the cloud billing data itself. So now that folks get these concepts, um, they're probably more comfortable building, you know, to Ashley's point uh, and, and also integrating multiple tools. Yeah, there's a need for it. Uh, talking last week at the London Roadshow to Sanjay Apti from Vodafone, they have, Vodafone has a very specific multi-cloud strategy. It, they have different clouds for different purposes. And there's not one tool that has the same feature set across every single cloud. So there's a, there's a need to create, uh, you know, what capabilities you need to perform for your company um, to tie a lot of things together. So yeah, to what Ashley said, buy and build, uh, you get your foundation and then also build on top of that to get a full suite of, of features that you need to run your FinOps org. Cool. And, and what we want to kind of dig into, I think, I, I think we've seen something on the, the, the chat as well. It's like, how do we look at these tools as well by maturity? Um, so so do, does, is there a trend there or is there a kind of difference there as well? Cool. So, so we looked at this, the consistent homegrown across um, runs across all three. Um, obviously, maturity is self-identified with the participants that took the survey. Um, we're seeing the, 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 the top tool is the cloud native uh, crawl stage and then third party tools to kind of as maturity grows on. And then we kind of looked at this and thought, OK, how can we also split the data? Can we split it by cloud spend? So that's what we did as well. Sorry, Jay, I'm, I'm speeding you up. <laughs> um, so you can see, see the differences there. Um, you can, some really surprising ones. I must say that the 100 million plus was a small, smaller segment. Um, there's fewer participants doing that. I think it was around 89, 90 that responded there. Homegrown tooling popping up to the top, um, while while the other lists as well performing poorly as kind of expected. Um, Ashley, have you, have you got any points on this you'd like to make? Yeah, I mean, I think they make sense when you're spending over $100 million, you probably have a relatively large, um, you know, hopefully stable engineering team and engineers like to engineer solutions. So um, kind of makes sense if you're in that spend that you're maybe doing some more home growing tools. But I also I've seen many enterprises that, you know, their engineering culture is, you know, we build great applications and platforms for our customers and we leverage other tools. Um, you know, we're not going to be a security tool. We're not going to be observability tool. We will go leverage those. So I've seen definitely um, it in both areas. I think the one thing, you know, call on this is we talk about the iron triangle and always having to make those trade-off decisions. And that's what you need to do with tooling. And, and same thing, like, do you, do you, do you want to invest money into it or do you want to get it quickly uh, and work with it and integrate it. So I, I think we see a lot of that happen here. And I think the other thing I just would like, you know, call kind of out is like that we just saw all of those different tools, right? This tooling space is huge. And like, there are companies that are behind there that are putting new uh, features out, um, you know, monthly, quarterly. Mm -hmm. And so it's so important, I think, as a FinOps practitioner, you know, if you're leading a FinOps team to, you know, be looking at those tools on a regular basis, be doing demos from those tools, see what's out there, you know, testing things out. Um, you'd kind of be surprised what some of your engineering teams, you know, might want to use. And so make sure you're including those in those conversations when you're, you're looking at tools too. Yeah, I would, I would just chime in here too, Steve, really quick and say, you know, a key point, I think what this data is really showing us is if you're a practitioner and you're looking at tooling, interoperability is really key right now. So you're looking at tooling that is uh, API first in terms of its approach you're looking at tooling that's going to be using modern open standards in terms of data exchange, um, because uh, like it or not, eventually you will probably run into a scenario where you'll need to do either an implementation yourself or integration with another tool. Yeah. I, I, I want to meet the company that says we grew our cloud spend and our environment got simpler. Uh, <laughs> you, you need to you need to have your, your tool stack and, and I'm interested to hear what people are using. And don't and again, forget, no matter what tool you have, you're going to have to export to Excel. <laughs> very true, very true. Um, tools and services Slack channel. I've already seen people putting their FinOps tooling stack in there and kind of how they connect these things up and what tools they're using. It's great to see kind of what people are using and how, they, how they're using it as well. 
Um, but yeah, please continue the conversation. Again, State of FinOps Slack channel, please ask. I know there's some, some questions in the chat as well, how we would like this data to be split um, as we continue to look at it as well. Thank you.